surround yourself with people who can influence what you need to achieve. Why, when you're darker skinned, even in the same race, do you have to pay a price? Until we can economically transform South Africa, we will remain to be slaves. Welcome to Visionaries Lounge. I trust you're ready to be inspired because Namhlanje Umvakashwetu is Impogoto, who is nothing short of amazing. She's a fierce go-getter, and I want to read you her profile just so I can do justice to it. She's an African entrepreneur who uses digital platforms to transform the media landscape. She's a mom in pursuit of realizing, quote, Africans for Africa movement for change. She's a graduate of the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Leadership Program for Women Entrepreneurs. She's an official publicist to the German World Cup SA Handover 2006, as well as the 2010 World Cup Gateway International Media Center. Allow me to introduce to you Vanessa Paramol. A very good evening to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I wanted to make sure that I get all those accolades in place <laughs> because it is something that is quite an incredible feat that you've managed to achieve. But I don't want to speak about your achievements first. I want to speak about Vanessa as a youngster growing up. Where were you born and raised? I was born in Germiston on the East Rand. And it was very much like a squatter camp area, like, and uh, Indians were then moved into Actonville. Uh, oh, they were living there with colored and black people. So my mom and them moved from Germiston into our home, where they still live in the family home. And Actonville is in Benoni, and I often talk about it because, you know, you hear about Charlize Theron, you hear about the Princess of Bonago, but it's also the East Rand has rich history. And it has birthed great South Africans, ordinary South Africans who do extraordinary things. So I'm very blessed to have come from that uh, community uh, because they're so diverse and there's so many challenges. It's important, I think, that we remember where we come from when we're moving forward. Mm, indeed. What was life like? Mom, dad, brothers or sisters? So my dad had died when... Uh, he was 32 years old and my mom was a widow at the age of 29. Wow. So I was eight years old when he had passed on. And my earlier years, for whatever reason, unlike most other kids, I dived into a very humane, humanitarian activism uh, uh, role. I suppose because of the East End, you know, the Kachalias were there, Kasani's from the region, Oliver, uh, Oliver Reginald Tambo's from the region. So one of the things I did, I, I went straight into activism and student leadership, and I understood the value of fighting for freedom. And when I watched Wits, uh, when Wits students went out and fees must fall, after years and years, I have t uh, two teenage kids. I've been trying to tell them that's what we did. We did pamphlets and we did posters and we uh, were able to um, use the the mentors and the peers, we were able to trust them to tell us how we can get our freedom. Is this why you went into journalism? I suppose so. I suppose because it was very community driven and also I'm, I come from a very close knit family and a community that's very diverse. So in between all of that, the one thing we did is like go out to clubs. We loved dancing. But you started to go through a metamorphosis, if I can say that. Yes. You went from journalism, you got into um, publicity? Yes, I did. Speak to us about that myth. So when I, in a free South Africa, you know, being born, um, I say to people we were born as slaves because we were not free. So we're just free for 24 years now. Mm -hmm. you, you need to understand that. But 21 years ago, we moved into the northern suburbs. And I happen to live just opposite Hyde Park Shopping Centre, which has, uh, at one, um, I think still now, was uh, a affluency oh, yes. in liquid cash. Oh, yes. So I came, when I moved there, there were no black people in that area. I got married and that's where we stayed. So you asked me why I did publicity and I moved out of mainstream. Because I started meeting up with white women who were able to pick up their kids from school, who took them to tennis and swimming, something I had not heard of ever done in black communities because we were taught to be teachers, nurses. It was a mark of respect to go and become a secretary. And when I was this side, I like, what do you mean you're a consultant? Mm. So I wanted to be what they, wa what they had. So I started also then looking for a job where I could not need to travel so much. 
because I didn't want to travel. And, you know, uh, incidentally, you know, we, we travel for pleasure as, as far and wide as we can. And so I ended up at SAMRO, the Southern African Music Rights Organization, working in the company. And by virtue of the job they do, because they collect money and royalties for artists, I was also born at the right time, in the right place, at the right, t uh, in the right season. Mm -hmm. So I've also been very fortunate to be able to interact with peers whose shoulders I stand on, giants. Uh, you know, Brenda Fassi I met in my lifetime. My company had worked uh, with Mamadi Makebe. I've engaged with uh, Jonas Gwangwa, Sibongile Kumalo, Pops Muhammad. I have great mentors. And by virtue of the work I did when I started my own business, sadly, Pachito Beloy was murdered. That about two months later, a very good friend of ours. What that had done for me, it was such a sad moment in my own life because he, he was such a good friend. But it also enabled me to get a very good international database of journalists. Mm. And so as a publicist, I was fortunate then. People started seeing me as a gateway of excellence into knowledge. And that's the gap because, you know, you dream of these ideas and you need to move into a mm -hmm. gap. And I realized people thought that I know Bono in there personally, or that I know, uh, I had dinner with Lucky Dube, as yes, an example. Yeah. So when Lucky Dube was murdered, my daughter at the time said to me, Mom, is Lucky Dube related to us? I said, why? She said, but why are all the people phoning you? So I realized that I'd stepped into, as a publicist and now as an entrepreneur, into a market that nobody else was covering at the time. So let's hold that thought because after the break, I want to delve into sure. the entrepreneur that lurked within and you <laughs> didn't know until you uncovered that. Do you stay with us. Let's explore more after this. Once again, thank you so much for joining us. Our guest this evening is Vanessa Paramol. She is a publicist to the stars in South Africa, the go-to girl for the creme de la creme of South Africa's entertainment industry. Vanessa, you spoke to us about how you went from a journalist to you then uh, went to become the entrepreneur that we see today, but you haven't given us the scoop on what it was like actually working with uh, the movers and the shakers in South Africa's arts industry. You know, because I just worked with movers and shakers, you realize how hard it is to be an entrepreneur in the art sector. You have to pay your bills. You know, the, the reason I champion the Africans for African narrative and the story, I got tired because these are men and women who've contributed to the millions that I have made. You don't read a story where you'll read about Sibongile Kumalo employing 14 people to travel with her, or you, Masikele, uh, working for the whole year and empowered maybe 27 families. You don't read the stories about how the makeup artist, how the hairstylist, how the nail artist got paid from this career. So it's always humbling for me to see how much harder they work. You know, my mom would say, oh God, have you got your slippers on? And these people, they're so famous. Yeah. Fame or not, these are moms and dads. Mm -hmm. I'm blessed to be able to live in a generation of a, a particularly black South African creative industries whose struggles are much more defined by the hardships apartheid has mm -hmm deny the privileges of. But it also just speaks of your character then. You must be quite firm and confident to be able to manage some people. I mean, don't they ask for ice blocks that are room temperature or oh, I <laughs> want a dozen roses that are white, etc. You need to actually be firm as well, doesn't it? Yeah, and here's the thing, there's two worlds. You have the Western world of artists, yeah. right? I know it was not, I work with African artists and then I could work with uh, uh, I mean, I've worked with Stan Van Joy of Jazz, I've yeah. worked with Grammy Award winners, and I could be working with Lionel Richie as an example. The parity of what is fair for an African artist. I've never shared this story. I worked backstage with Dorothy Masuku and Abigail Kubeka. I worked backstage with Tandy Klassen. I worked backstage with many, with Jonas Gwangwa, mm -hmm. etc. The reality is my backstage is not my Celine Dion backstage. My, my backstage is not what 
Africans empower Western artists with. That is such that's a my critical, pain. That's, that's my a critical pain. issue that still lingers even today. It still that does. We Africans don't value our own we, as much as we do international art. We really don't recognize our greatest musicians, be it film, stage, music, until they are gone. A nation that values overseas role models has no future for our children have to walk the same path that we have, touch, feel the same role models that they know. The simplicity of how we can change this narrative is where we choose to spend our money. Are we buying local? Are we infusing our economy in a way that can create African giants in, in, in culture. Here, yeah, whether you're working with Yvonne Chaka, spend a day with Yvonne Chaka Chaka, run around with Sibongile, uh, Kumalo. Find how hard they themselves work. Their artistic genius is far superior than most artists globally. We don't know how to celebrate each other, man. That's what we don't know. We lack the ability to be magnanimous and generous to those we know. First. So when you when you're doing all of this, yes. how then did you go under? So I was working in a sector, the music industry, and the income stream I was working when is intellectual property rights in music, like royalty collection. Mm -hmm. uh, do, uh, the issues of copyright is not something that everybody works with. Yeah. And so the skill and the team you bring in is one that would be able to uh, uh, latch onto different, different income streams in that, in that arena. With digital coming on, the income streams for the music industry diminished. You're, when you go into your car, there's no CD player. Live performances have gone under because YouTube, people have concerts on YouTube. So you must know artists don't have money. There was, in the, in the last three years, Mainstream artists were doing everything else but performances because there was no money. Mm. So still, people are, are, are recovering. Mm. Fortunately for me, <coughs> as a visionary, I had launched the African Media Resource Center about nine years ago, or 10 years ago. And I'd always had a dream to say, I want to change the African media narrative. How are you going to do it, people said. I said, I'm going to use digital. Mm. And people said, are oh, you crazy? They didn't see the it vision. It was not in fashion back then. And nobody could see it. Like, what, are you, what the hell are you talking about changing the African media narrative? What, yeah. what are you going to do? So I said, I want to tell positive stories. Yeah. Because if you tell positive stories, and not only negative, mm. we can move how we trade with each other's trading blocks. Mm. We can ensure that we can break down visa requirements on the continent. We can make sure that we rather than be, become consumers, we become producers. Of course. We can use digital now. What digital has done is allowed us parity. We no longer can Breaks bridge. Break the barriers. Claim, oh, the West can do this, the West mm -hmm. can do that. <clears throat> what we need to do now is to use digital to our advantage. A nice word I learned, I learned this, and I, and I follow uh, trendsetters and people who are using digital to their advantage, is build your ecosystem, people who can talk back to you. Mm. You need to make sure that you surround yourself with people who can influence what you need to achieve. Wow. Refuse to be with people who take you down and, be, and, and allow you to be a victim. Don't be a victim. Mm -hmm. <coughs> you know, in, 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 sometimes you go through whole life and you think somebody likes you and in a minute you have a family fight and you realize you were eating at a table where you were not wanted. Refuse to put yourself in that position. I want to find out not only what have you done, but what more you still want to do. What are your life goals, your ambitions, your bucket list? And what bucket do you do for fun? Me. We'll get all those answers and more in just a moment. Stay with us. I'm loving this little belt. <laughs> it's, it's not a sign that you need, you need to go back to school or anything. It's a beautiful souvenir from Peru. Yeah. As we get into what you want to do next, Vanessa, talk to me about traveling. It, it seems to feature quite a lot because I have your book here, South America on a shoestring. We have lovely memorabilia from Peru. Traveling big? It's my narcotic. You know, everybody has their weakness. Yeah. Don't travel if you haven't, because once you start to do it and go back, you do reckless things when you start traveling. <laughs> like what? <laughs> like you eat bread only. 
<laughs> so you can have money to travel. And like your wedding ring will cost you 100 rand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I love the fact that when you travel, you see a different perspective. Yeah. You learn a lot about yourself. Absolutely. You learn a lot about others. What does traveling do for you? You know, it puts life into perspective. We're not in a vacuum. It's a global village out there. God, it brings me back to, you know, I'm on a spiritual journey. As you get older, you get start, again, start getting spiritual. Every time I'm lost in translation, I grow from the experience. You know, I'm that kind of mother, like hell. We not, even if it means writing, missing the exam to go to Machu Picchu, that's what we're going to be doing. We'll be going to Machu Picchu. Because I feel it, every time you travel, you learn so much more. You put yourself in a position to just infuse knowledge. And people are just wonderful. It's, the, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's an amazing gift to be able to do that. And it's a gift that you're sharing with your little one. They're, they're, they're still little in this picture. Talk about the digital but era. But they're big now. Talk about the digital era. Yes. I don't think we've got a photo, like a photo photo of us. Yeah, like a, a hard copy <laughs> Like one. a hard copy Yeah, photo. because everything is digitalized. Yeah, so I think I, I, my daughter put this in the, my bag this morning. I said, gosh, I, uh, you know, because what I do, this is my family. Uh, I also come from, you know, I love my cousins. We spend lots of times. I'm like a family person and my brother and my sister. But my family themselves, uh, you know, I recently responded to last year to assist the festival of the desert in Mali. And it became so dangerous because of Al-Qaeda and Syria and uh, it it's, uh, went to the heart of fundamentalism and culture and music and Muslim culture and Islamic, etc. My daughter said, but the day I was leaving to Burkina Faso and like it was like real, like, you know, on my way to Mali and, and like to support the festival of the desert. My daughter said to me, mom, why are you doing this? It's so dangerous. I said, because families like us, Tenita, had liberated us around the world. They'd given up their beds. Mm -hmm. They did, and, and so some families, unfortunately or fortunately, are gonna just have to take up that baton. So I rob my children of time so much, you don't understand. I'm a crazy woman like that. So you, 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 you hope to be the change you want to see. And I'm going <laughs> to dig a little bit deeper into your little bag of tr tricks here. <laughs> she asked me to bring and it's food. also proudly South African, so I'm glad uh, I can see the back. African. Inspire, that's what you hope to do. <clears throat> you know, I get inspired when people are able to teach and I can learn. Yeah. And I think time is so valuable. You know, Oh, gosh, I'm not a saint. I, I, I mean, it's difficult to work with me. You have to be really good to work for, for, to re achieve my <laughs> standards. You, know, I, I, you have to be God. You have to really want a job to work with me, if I, as an example. But it does get, life gets difficult. And even when you've been horrible, you need to understand people are people and it's, at an emotional level, you need to be, be the best that you can be. Mm. So learn from other people and be inspired but also learn to inspire people so that they have hope. And I think, you know, what's also very important is to do your work to the best of your ability because you don't know who's watching. For instance, your little girl, who's not little anymore, she's 18, 18. now, is following after your footsteps and, and looks very close to actually surpass mom in being able to galvanize Absolutely. support uh, for, for worthy initiatives. You know, the, you, they say, and uh, one, of, one of the accolades or one of the... What's the word? It, it, it was really resonated with me because I, I personally, it touched me. When the comments were coming through when Tainita had done um, um, Dolly, uh, Dolly Ratebe's tombstone, when they say an apple doesn't fall far from its tree, and I just marked it with, a, with pride and honor because you know your daughter defies everything you want. She fights with <laughs> you your whole life. I mean, you don't have daughters, <laughs> yes. you have sons. Listen, but I was a daughter <laughs> yeah. and I fully did that. It's, it's in our genes. And like, to like see, and because unfortunately for my children, they've always had this, it's not a baggage, but they've always had to deal with somebody who's won a Grammy or an Oscar or a Sama music. Award. So it's also tiring for them, you know, like mom, I'd say, come take a photo with yeah, them. Yeah. And to see Tenita so generously give of her time to the uh, Dolly Ratebe project was, was for me just like, how simple is it to share an idea mm. and see it just bursting and come to life. It's crazy to think that she's passed on like 11 years ago, as you're saying, and someone that amazing, someone that important, um, someone that influential didn't have a tombstone. But what inspires you? What fills your tank? You know, I'm inspired by the fact that ordinary people can do extraordinary things. Mm. 
I inspired by the fact that people that God has given me a gift of vision mm -hmm. and a voice to speak for the voiceless. Mm -hmm. Is that why this book is also quite close to your heart and was in your your bag of tricks? So that's my mum. <laughs> you know, my mum does uh, Psalm 91. But I find the Bible constant for me personally. Because so much is going wrong when you can kill people for their religion. So all of us need to have a space we can go to, a go-to space, whether you take a walk or whether you go. And, and, and I talk of activism. And I'm starting to look at the women who surround Jesus and how influence, influential they were with their wealth and in economic empowerment. And then when you talk about being able to use your resources for the greater good, I can't help but look at this that you read, I believe once every year at least. Hmm? I read it because I think if, there was, if God was good in his thinking and his planning, yeah. why would black people all over the continent suffer because of the color of their skin? Sure. In fact, all over well, the world. All over the world. And and the so that yeah. is for me the paradox. I say, why? Why, when you're darker skinned, even in the same race, do you have to pay a price? Why does a man judge you by the color of your skin? So what I like about Capitalist Nigger, he relates stories, is harsh on black people. But he also makes me think about how I want to use my time. And so at the core of South Africa is transformation mm. at the level of black and white, of poor and rich. And until we can economically transform South Africa, until a man or a woman is not judged by the color of his or her skin, the we, and we will remain to be slaves. Mm. And speaking about doing good for human beings, how do you give back? My whole life is about wanting to give back because I have been generously receiving. I, uh, people have been good to me, they've opened many opportunities. The world and the universe has been kind to me. Two or three of the ch causes I champion is Africans for Africa because I feel so hurt about xenophobia. And some of, you know, like my friends just happen to live in Mali or they happen to live in Zanzibar or they happen to live in Swaziland. And if you're in South Africa, it's becoming so dangerous. So the, the plight of the refugees and the border control really, really bothers me and bugs me. But more than that, I'm so sad at how the media who controls what we say and what we do and how we can do better does not do a narrative that defines the Africa that we live in to a level that can unslave us. And of course then the journalist in you still keeps a journal. I love keeping journals as well. I, I like going back three, four years and seeing where I was in my headspace and how much I've grown. So I think this is a handy tip for the viewers. Also a handy tip, keep these around and I think I'm gonna need them and I put them on and listen to you sharing your nuggets of wisdom in just a moment. Thank you so much for joining us, our guest this evening, Vanessa Paramol, and thank you for having joined us. I trust that you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Let's do it all over again next week. Same Time, same place. Bye for now. Be kind to yourself. Be gentle. Give yourself a break. Surround yourself with winners. Inspire other people. Move from ordinary to extraordinary in the simplest things you do. Collaborate, partner, travel widely. Be kind to your family. As an entrepreneur, cash flow matters. Put yourself in a position and collaborate and partner with people that can influence you to do better. Share your wisdom and learn to have lots and lots of fun. Thank you. Mm -hmm.